internet! I'm Hamster Bomb, and you are back to some more Ask Hamster! Well, it hasn't been that long, has it? <laughs> anyway, let's just get back to it. Okay, okay, that whole Pokemon Star Smash, I don't think it's real, it's real, it's called Spectro. She plays the person with the sword or something with the sword. All the while, you spend all the monster under the control of that, all the while, you go. Good game, highly recommend! <laughs> okay, except, hold on. You didn't actually play as Pokemon, and you weren't actually fighting against monsters from Monster Hunter. Which is the main point of what I was talking about before, so if anything, not really. What are you going to throw out that old shirt? You know the light blue one with the black birds on it? It has like five holes in it. Well, let me see, I make about a dollar a day with YouTube, so maybe in about a month. Oh man, it is pretty bad, isn't it? Wow, you're right, this is a terrible shirt! I wish I had nice things! Ocarina Hero, is that you? Yes. Will you get a Nintendo Switch, and if so, will you post anything on your channel about it? I don't just blindly buy consoles. I don't even have money to buy new shirts! But, if anything, I need to know what games are coming out on it first, and if anything, would I be able to record the games that are coming out on it, because for sure they're going to be changing the video output. Nintendo is notorious for trying to stop people from putting their own video content on YouTube, so if anything, it's not going to be very cheap, it's not going to be very easy. So, I don't know, it depends on what they're going to make, if anything, I might actually have to go back to filming the screen, which stinks, I hate doing that. Um, so, I don't know, there really aren't any games on it right now that are making me, like, really, really want to play it. If anything, it's just Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, which I would love to play on the channel, but the thing is, one, I can't afford to, two, uh, there's really no other games I really want to play on it, and three, the third thing. So, also for a fourth thing. But, but still, you know, there's this, I don't know. I don't know, I'm not, I'm not super excited about it yet, and like I said, I never buy consoles just because the new console's out, you know? I mean, I gotta have a re or games that I know I'm going to play a lot on it already, at least two or three. And if it's like the 3DS, it's mainly franchises, Pokemon and Monster Hunter just keep releasing for it. And the Switch, I don't really see anything on it. It's just really Nintendo's next Wii U gimmick thing. Uh, they claim it's their next console. I look at it and I'm like, I see a lot of issues with that thing already I'm not excited for. And if anything, as long as the games on it are going to be okay, maybe. But they haven't really shown as many. What is your opinion on all of the Sun and Moon Legendaries being shiny locked? I feel that they could at least have not shiny locked the Tapus. They not only shiny locked all of the Tapu Guardians, they shiny locked the Legendaries, as you said, and they shiny locked every Ultra Beast. They also shiny locked every Pokemon you encounter during a trial, including the Totem Pokemon. So, everything is ridiculously. There's a ridiculous amount of shiny locks in this game. It is so depressing. It's the most amount of shiny locks we've ever gotten in a Pokemon game ever. And I'm talking like. 20% of all of the new Pokemon, 20% of them are shiny locked. Because there's that many new Guardians, the Legendaries, there's the Ultra Beast, that, that's a lot of Pokemon. That is 20% of all of the new Pokemon they added are shiny locked. It's ridiculous, it's so depressing. Like, I look at the game and I'm like, okay, cool, what do I wanna do for post game? I wanna shiny hunt some Legendaries. I wanna go for, you know, a shiny version of, you know, the Ultra Beast. They even give you alternates, like you get to catch duplicates of the same Pokemon. Why would you not, not let us shiny hunt for them? It makes no sense to me. I have no idea. It's like they just want to devalue their own Pokemon, and then, by that I mean, later they're going to give out a shiny event of each of these things, assuming they even do, and even if they do that, or just let us hunt them in later games, which is also stupid, I don't know, it just bothers me to no end that this shiny lock thing that started in the, sort of in the fourth gen, the mainly the fifth generation is when people really started noticing it, and we were saying, okay, this, this is stupid, we hate this, and then they did it again for the next generation, and it was worse, and now it is a freight train of horror, and I don't understand why they keep doing this, and their logic is really broken behind it too, because for them shiny locking those legendaries, they should have shiny locked the starter. I don't want them to have shiny locked the starter. If anything, I would have preferred that they didn't shiny lock the starter and, you know, made it so it only took about 30 seconds to do a soft reset at best, instead, you know, not two minutes and 15 seconds or whatever the heck it is. I don't know. But either way, it's a mess. It's really depressing. And that's all I gotta say about it. No! Not more Metal Gear! Oh no! 
Alex is playing more Metal Gear! Seriously, w how would you feel if somebody who really liked Metal Gear went on the Monster Hunter videos and kept saying, No, no more Monster Hunter! Like, it's not hurting you that I'm making more videos that other people want to watch. This channel's not all about you, it's not all about one person, it's about everybody in the community. Also, Alex, we're both explosive beings, right? Hamster Bomb and Atomic Thomas. What would happen if we both exploded at the same time? There'd be more Metal Gear, that's what. Hashtag Ask Hamster. Do you like watching anime? If so, which series do you like? I would strongly recommend Code Geass, Lelouch of the Rebellion, and Neon Genesis Evangelion. Yeah, those series are on my list, but as I've said in past episodes, I never get a chance to because I'm so busy doing other things. Technically three jobs, and oh gosh, yes, some of them I need to do stuff today for, but I forgot about this Ask Hamster thing that I had to do, so here I am. But still, like, there's a lot that I would like to be able to watch, but I never get the chance to, so. Um, honestly, one of the big things that is on my list that I really want to watch soon that I have never seen anything for is Cowboy Bebop. Um, I've heard a lot of great stuff about it. I've never gotten a chance to watch it. My friends have watched it and rewatched it and they really like it. And I'm like, I'm busy. Oh my god, I can't wait to play MH for you with you. Remember the Twitter DM I sent you in reply to? I love every vid. MH for you. What year are you living in? Um, John Walter's living in the year where Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate is better than Generations. Which is every year. Oh! Seeing as it's now December, I think I can safely post this question. Which Sun and Moon Pokemon are you wanting to shiny hunt the most? Well, as you can see, I've done a lot of shiny hunting in the uh, Pokemon Moon Let's Play so far, and there's a lot more that I am going to be doing that I've already filmed past. Um, I've done online with you guys on Twitch. Um, there's some that right now I'm about to start hunting, and honestly, one that I really want that you guys know about is I want to go back and shiny hunt Marini. I got the Corsola out of it, as you guys saw in the Corrupted video, and um, by the, I, I'm still trying, hoping that I can go back and get that Marini. Um, if anything, aside from that, one that I have not shiny hunted yet that I really want to is a certain gift Pokemon you get in post-game that you only get one of that I really, really want. Okay, I have a question. Oh, it looks like it's a doozy. Is Pokemon Sun and Moon worth it? Ooh, loaded question. Do you think the number of new Pokemon is too little? I don't think that's a problem with the game at all. Really, okay, like, it's not so much the new Pokemon is too little. If, if anything is too little, it's the amount of Alolan forms. I'm very comfortable with the amount of new Pokemon because it's about the amount that we got in the last generation. And honestly, we don't need a ton of new Pokemon. I mean, if they do that every generation, you realize what's going to happen. Pokemon's going to be inaccessible. There's going to be too many Pokemon, too many abilities, too many attacks. It's going to be ridiculous. People aren't going to be able to approach the game anymore. So it makes sense that they're trying to slow that down a little bit. But I mean, the Alolan forms, Come on, the Alolan forms. I mean, we got so few of them in the game. That's what depresses me. But it's it's no reason to not play the game. I want to keep reading your comment. When I go back to uh, Australia, I want to buy it, but I also have to buy a 3DS to play it on. But I think to myself now, as awesome as it looks, is it worth it? If it has a lot of repeat Pokemon and not as many new interesting Pokemon. Okay, well, if you're just playing it for new Pokemon, then... Yeah, I would just like stick through the Let's Play I've got on my channel and just to, you know, experience it that way. But if anything, I would recommend playing other 3DS games, especially Monster Hunter, not Generations. I would play Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate and maybe 3 Ultimate as well if you get both of them at like a really good deal or something. But 4 Ultimate is the better game. And still, on top of that, you know, especially if you like Pokemon, you're gonna really like Monster Hunter. But yeah, I wouldn't. I have absolutely. Okay, after. I honestly just yesterday trucked through that game, Pokemon Moon, for recording the story, and I tried to edit it down, and right now my computer is actually huffing and puffing and struggling trying to upload the whole thing, and it's going to honestly take an extremely long time, which is why I tried to do it in advance, like I said earlier. But, um, honestly, I think if I was going to, like, uh, really write that game, I think the beginning of it is fantastic. It's, it's a glorious, amazing, inventive, new, brilliant new Pokemon game. And it's not just what Pokemon are in it, it's how they executed everything. They did an amazing job with it. Um, I'd say Act 2, The Second Island, once again, really brilliant, really smart, a lot of fun. The Third Island, it's alright, it's still pretty good. It's still keeping the same formulas going, but for the most part you start feeling like, okay, it's starting to get a little rehashed at this point, something's kind of odd. And um, at some points, you know, something's starting to get handed to you, and you're like, oh, well, alright. And then it really peaks by peaks, I mean falls apart on the fourth island. The fourth island, story-wise, is like super short. 
you deal with the Ether Paradise, which I kind of bear pair with that fourth act with the final island. The story that wraps up in there, I feel like it's so bad, you're better off not knowing it because of anything. Well, I mean, if you're playing the game, like the mystery behind what's going on with um, Nebby, the Cosmog, and Lily, and Gladian, it's so much better not knowing because then once you know what really happened, you realize how stupid it is, how bad the plot holes are, how it doesn't make any sense, and how disappointing it really gets, and if anything, that part really falls apart, and then even gameplay-wise, how they're dealing with how they normally want to give you Z-Crystals after certain trials, they literally give up and run out of ideas. Two characters literally just walk up and give them to you, no fight, no trial, no nothing, and leave. It's depressing. It's like they had a great idea in the beginning and then they had to rush it out later because they ran out of ideas or they had to get it out for Christmas. And it really fell apart, I think. And the post game was fun, but there wasn't much to it. And it didn't fulfill or answer any of the problems with the massive plot holes in the main game either. So that's also depressing. I feel like they also made some seriously huge mistakes with other things in the post game. But that's, I guess it's convenient that I did blast through it recently, right before filming this video, but still, I have a lot of problems with that game, but I'm still super glad that they went and tried so many new things for the beginning of the game. It was very successful. It was like almost the best Pokemon game ever. Almost! They just didn't put in that full effort. I don't know, it just fell apart in the end so badly. I don't know. All I know of its information is from watching your playthroughs, as I wanted to keep it mostly spoiler-free, but it seems like it hasn't gotten too many new Pokemon. Yeah, well, once again, if it's all about the new Pokemon for you, no. Just, just watch the playthrough, have fun with that. I shiny hunt pretty much all of the new Pokemon. There's not many. So, if anything, I mean, they're really cool. I really like the new Pokemon, but no, there's not that many. Whew, that took a while. What would happen if you woke up in a room with cat photos all over the wall, in a room full of cats that are meowing at you? I would either freak out and scream, or it's just Monster Hunter, and that's just my Pepe army. Also, though a few years ago I was in a pretty bad accident and had surgeries back to back for about a year, so I was constantly bored at the hospital. Watching your videos were very helpful and funny, while I used to be stuck there and took a lot of anxiety away from these surgeries as well, always looking forward to seeing your videos. Ah, I'm so sorry you were stuck in a hospital for so long. That's got to be terrible. Back to back surgeries. That's just the worst. My dad had to go through something like that um, last year, and that's just terrible. It really is terrible. I'm glad that I got to be there for some people, though. I mean, that, that really is great. Like I said, and I say this in other videos, and I'll say it again now. I really. It, that's one of the best feelings that. I can still be, you know, the friend to somebody who is stuck out there who can't do anything, can't go anywhere. So that's really great that um, you're telling me that. I'm really glad that hopefully it sounds like you're out of it and you're better now. Um, and if not, hopefully you do, you know, get out of this situation. You're going to be okay soon. Uh, and anybody else who's out there also stuck in hospitals. I mean, it's, it's really no fun. You just really have to sit there and wait all day. Yeah, the anxiety, like you're saying as well, is also a problem. People have anxiety problems that watch this, so hopefully, like I said, I'm bringing some sort of odd joy to people's lives. I don't know how I could possibly do something like that other than acting like a total weirdo on the internet, which I love doing. Oh, it's John. Hi, John! As fantastic as your video gaming abilities are, your sense of humor and opinions about life are gold, which brings me to my first ever Ask Hamster question. Drum roll, please. Will you please start a vlog about your daily life as a new playlist? Your video of being trapped in Coles was great. In your vlog, you can share real-life moments like this. You could keep it short so that it didn't sit with a decrepit elderly voice. Interrupt your busy schedule. Hi. I know that gets asked a lot. People really want me to. They like those silly videos where I actually make stuff about what I'm doing in the real world, but normally, like, I don't just pull out my phone, which is not, it's actually what I did in Coles. I actually pull out my phone and start filming myself doing weird things. Um, I don't know, I probably should do that more often. Um, if anything, I don't know if I would put them on YouTube, if I should. Maybe I should put them, I don't know if you can post them on like Twitter or something. Uh, maybe the Facebook page, I don't know. But still, like, I would really like to, but the thing is, once again, it's either finding the time to, or, you know, actually remembering to is really the thing. I've got to remember, I've got to, you know, I can film this, I can make something funny out of this, but still. Um, yeah, I would love to, but and actually I do have a vlog, uh, whole playlist on my channel. There's the uh, stuff that we were, Kim and I were doing at the house. I remember and actually set those videos up intentionally, which is cool because you actually get, we have like video footage now of what that house looked like before we came in there and just tore it to pieces. Would you rather eat chocolate flavored poop or poop flavored chocolate? Where do they come up with this crap? Hi, I just wanted to thank you for your amazing entertaining videos. I have a few questions. 
Uh, by a few, he means two, which is also known as a couple. He has a couple few amazing questions. One, do you have a any tips for shiny hunting? I am very impatient, but I really want a shiny piggy pack. Best way to do it is SOS chaining. It is super easy in this game, but I would recommend going for, you know, trying to get a Pokemon who uh, is going to be able to keep that chain going easily and you don't have to think about it, which is a Smeargle. If you look at the moveset of the Smeargle I use in some of the later shiny Pokemon hunts I have on my channel, try and build a Smeargle with that moveset and go for that Picky Pack. It's still gonna take you a while, might take you about, I'd say like eight hours or so. Um, I'd say that's about how long it would take. I mean, I don't know about going for the Smeargle on top of that too, but once you have the Smeargle, then you can pretty much go anywhere. Two, what Zelda game would you recommend? I want to play it, but I don't know which to play. Thanks, you deserve much more subscribers. Honestly, like I said before, I think my favorite Zelda game is A Link to the Past, which is on the SNES. And the reason is, I think it is the most true to what the franchise really should be, which is, here's your sword, here's the shield, go out and figure out what you have to do. Go, you know, explore, go, you know, beat the temples and stuff, get all this, you know, goodies that's gonna eventually progress the story, yes, but there's not much story to it. And then beat the entire game that way. If you want a more of a story-based one, I think the best one by far is Twilight Princess. Wind Waker is a really great one if you just love randomly going and exploring uncharted areas. That one is a load of fun, too. Um, I would actually finally not recommend Ocarina of Time. Its controls are really clunky, and it I don't think it really holds up to the test of time very well at all, compared to those other three I just mentioned. So. I'd say if you want something that seems true to the franchise of what it really should be doing, go for a Link to the Past. If you want a great exploring game, then go for Wind Waker. If you really want a great story and Zelda game altogether, go for Twilight Princess. Oh god, that's a lot of questions. I'm gonna be over here so you can actually see them all. I totally support the idea of playing the first Monster Hunter game on the channel. I'm a crazed maniac of Monster Hunter fan. Although the final village quest is practically impossible nowadays, I'm pretty sure it is impossible. Though it might be possible if you just worked on trying to fight one of the two, maybe Rathian, and then tried to slowly, as Rathalos kills you obviously in that quest, slowly start building her high rank armor if that's even possible, and then if you could do that, then try and take on the quest, so it might be possible, but I don't know, the quest is ridiculous. I have seven questions, brace yourself! My mom wants to know what subject you teach. I technically have jumped around. The last semester, I taught video game development. We were actually working on building video games as a group. So the entire group, everybody together, was working on one video game. And the uh, projects what we were doing was kind of um, self-derived. Everyone had to come up with what they were going to be able to contribute to the main game, be it programming, art, or, um, you know, either scripting, uh, working out how levels are designed, all sorts of stuff. And um, modeling, animations, all those things were going into it as well. So people were coming up with all their parts and it was being brought together for the end, so it was a video game class. Though this semester, what I'm going to be teaching is a comics class. Kind of similar to that idea, but instead everyone's working on their own, like, two to four page small mini comic. And we're going to go through a whole bunch of things of, like, how comics work. And uh, by the end of the semester, or towards the end of the semester, really, um, everyone's comic, short comic, is going to be brought together and made into a little anthology book of all the comics from the class together, and we're going to get them printed. So, yep, comics and video games. What is your favorite meme? I don't know, I like so many memes, but for some reason, the one that keeps popping up into my head is, I don't want to live on this planet anymore. If you could create your own quest in Monster Hunter, let's assume all games are combined, what would be the location and what five monsters would be in the quest? You're assuming that I wanted to make five monsters in a quest anyway, which I wouldn't. If I was going to make a Monster Hunter quest, it would be, let's see, on the Wii, because I'm pretty sure compared to all other Monster Hunter games, that's the one with the console that had the most, let's just say, firepower to it. And I would prefer you go into the room and it's the arena and you have to slay 100 joggies. And the room is full of all hundred of them. No lag, I, I don't wanna see any of that lag or nothing. I want them all jumping at you at the same time. Absolute chaos madness. And no, they don't have like 
you know, buffed attack or health or anything. I just want it to be a mess. If you could create a creature that would serve the purpose of being both a Pokemon and a monster for the Monster Hunter series, what would that creature look like and what would its name be? It would probably be the Kool-Aid Man with a mustache named Greg. He's Thunder-type. Which small and large monsters would you like to have as a pet? For me, it would be Gargwa and me, Ryu, from Frontier. Ludrox because they're adorable, and Tigrex because, man, I'd be the coolest guy around if I had a pet Tigrex. Have you ever heard of this game called Dauntless? People are referring to it as the Western Monster Hunter. In fact, the developers of the game are fans of Monster Hunter. Sounds like one of those knockoffs of Monster Hunter, of which there are a lot. But no, I haven't heard of it. The Nintendo Switch is getting extreme hype! Do you have any thoughts on the subject at all? Kinda got into it before, but um, it's also getting extreme hate, and I'm more of like in the middle, like just watching everyone get excited, like, huh. And then watching all the people over there getting really mad, like, huh. And I'm like, hmm. Huh. I don't know. I feel like I wanted to say something more, but this is already way too many questions as it is. I agree! Get off of this! One of my dogs has such a loud bark when she screams, it's so loud I could get temporarily deaf after hearing it. Here's my reenactment of my own temporarily deaf. But it doesn't last that long, it's only temporary. Are you planning on shiny hunting any time in the near future? Have you not been watching my channel? If you could make a Pokemon, what would it be? Mine would be a fire and fighting Iris Setter Pokemon with the ability Stubborn, which maxes out if the Pokemon's attack if it missed a move. I would make a Water Fairy of the Megalodon. Even though I believe in you, Megalodon, I know you're out there somewhere. I have two questions for you. One, who is your favorite professor? You know, I've never thought of it like that before, but if I have to pick a favorite professor, I think I like Professor Elm, just because he's kind of silly, you know, he's always stumbling over what he's trying to work on, and I don't know, all the other professors are more just kind of there, um, and without spoiling anything about the newer games, they're not that, I don't know, it's just too predictable what happens with some of them, and I just kind of like the simplicity of the silly Professor Elm who looks up to the original Professor Oak in a way that the player would have when playing the second gen game. Two, if you could live in any town or city, or any place in the Pokemon world, where would you live? Huh, where would you get the best internet? Nah, screw it. Constant vacation. I wanna live in Alola somewhere. Alex became a powerful YouTuber the day he held the magic sword and said, BY THE POWER OF HAMSTER! A uh, He-Man soundtrack plays, of which I don't have the rights to. I have a hamster! Yeah? And that's all we have for this time as well. So, oh my gosh, that could have been a ton of questions and comments and stuff to read for one episode of Ask Hamster, so I'm glad we split it into, I guess you guys probably are too. We got two episodes of Ask Hamster this month, but still, that's like a lot of editing and stuff for me that I wasn't really expecting to doing. Like I was saying before, I was kind of planning on doing some streaming stuff today, but I couldn't do it because Ask Hamster got so huge. So for the next time, I'm going to be combining the questions that I see on Ask Hamster 11 and now 12, and then for, I'm going to be sorting that down to just 30 of them to read for next time. And even 30 really is a lot. If you combine both of these together, we read 37. But as you saw, a good number of those had multiple questions and up to seven sometimes. And so I really want to try and limit that down. So obviously the least amount of, you know, sub questions, inside questions that we get are going to make it more likely that I can actually get to respond to you. And um, obviously, if it's you know, I can make a better response for you guys, or if it's actually helpful for somebody, or someone really needs to have something said, or if it's not pointless, you know, I, some of them are you know, just kind of pointless and silly. Um, but still, anyway, I'm gonna try and use that kind of logic and sort down which ones I can respond to for the next time. And uh, if you guys don't get your comments responded from here on out in Ask Amsterdam, I'm sorry about that. Try and jump on while I'm on Twitch if you want me to respond to something, because I totally will for you. It's just a matter of time's sake, you know, for trying to get these videos done, because there's a lot of editing that has to go into this. So. With that all said, if you want to have me read your comment for the next video, leave it down in the comment section below in this one or in the previous one, Ask Hamster 11. But with all that out of the way, thank you all so much for watching. Remember to like the videos and subscribe for more, and I will see you all in the next episode of Ask Hamster. Fooyu! They don't even know about you yet. Oh, their time will come.